May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. My children amuse and inspire me. The other day, one of my daughters came up to me and asked, why are you putting on your shoes, Dad? It seemed like an odd question, but these are unusual times. I've been working from home since the end of March due to the coronavirus pandemic. The trip to my home office each day involves a walk of a few metres along a polished timber floor. I could do it in bare feet or socks or even bright yellow slippers that look like Tweety Bird feet, of, of which I have a pair. But I choose to wear work shoes. The complaint from daughter number two came because she felt my shoes were too noisy for her and her sister, uh, who until recently had been sleeping in till about 10.30 during the holidays. But my answer was, putting on my shoes was just part of me getting ready, part of my preparation for the day. It's my way. We all have our own ways, routines, habits, the ways we, way we pack a dishwasher, the way we spread Vegemite on toast the way we express love for our children and our grandchildren. Some of our ways annoy family members. Some of our ways are endearing, but they are our ways. In John's Gospel today, Jesus talks about being the way to the Father. It's a tough ask in a pluralistic, multi-faith world where we all have our own ways. And even with our, within our own Anglican Church of Australia, we have Anglo-Catholics and Evangelicals, Low Church, High Church, Pentecostals, and everything in between. But how can there be only one way to God? In preaching about being the way, Jesus wasn't just delivering a blunt, no arguments will be entered into message, that it's my way or the highway. But he was saying, look to the integrity and manner of my life and follow that way. Of course, in this gospel passage, Jesus gives us much more to think about than simply saying he is the way. He actually went two steps further, and that's what I want to explore with you today. The full quote is important. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's look at the truth. And I note that Pontius Pilate posed the question, what is truth? But he just left it hanging there without an answer. But we won't do that today. The truth is a concept which gets a lot of bad press these days. But to be true is to be authentic. Many churches insist that to be an authentic Christian, you have to tick all the boxes. And if you miss one box, you're not authentic. But I think they miss the point. To be authentic, to be true, is to be genuine, to be self-aware, able to inspire loyalty and trust, to be upfront and to display behaviour that you want to see in others. I am the truth. I am authentic. That's what Jesus is saying. Jesus also said, I am the life. Jesus lived the life of true integrity, the way he loved others, the poor, the marginalised, the outcast, the young, the old, provides a model for us. To live like Jesus may be an unattainable model for us mere mortals, but it's a pointer, a pointer to the way in which God wants us to live. That is, as people whose lives are interwoven, integrated with our family, with our friends, with our neighbours, with our environment, the created world, and integrated with God. How are we interwoven? Well, by love. And I've always loved the Celtic image of the interwoven knot. The Book of Kells and the Lindisfarne Gospels of the early 8th century continue to enthrall me. As Michael Mitten writes in his book, restoring the woven cord. Their illuminations are based on wonderful and intricate strands which are interwoven to form the most beautiful patterns, 
full of vitality and meaning. The woven cord or the interlacing is a profound image. The Celts created the patterns to represent wholeness. And if you look at the carpet pages, as they're known, in the Lindisfarne Gospels, you can see this. Interestingly, the illustrator Edfrith left one of the birds on John's Gospel page incomplete, so, that, so to avoid any claim of perfection. He wanted to underline that perfection is the realm of God alone. But that's just a side note. The pattern of the knot, of the integration between God, our environment, our history, and our community is alive. It's connected. It flows. It seems to dance on the page. It's a symbol of how life in Christ can and should be. Life interwoven by love. Importantly, in the Gospel reading, Jesus goes on to say that his words are not just my own, rather it's the Father living in me who is doing his work. So Jesus is emphasising, is not emphasising the I in I am the way. He's actually saying it's not about me. It's about allowing God to work through you being God's eyes and ears and hands. He's saying, I don't go about healing people and turning water into wine to make me look like a miracle worker. I do it because it's what God wants. It's to direct people along the path, along the way to God. So in conclusion, I'll continue to put on my shoes, despite what my daughter says, and tie my shoelaces in knots, even though I'm not in my Parliament House office at the moment. But that's just my way. And I'll continue to pray for the people of St Albans, even though our church services are on YouTube rather than face to face. And that's also my way, modelled on Jesus' way. Working and prayer are elements of my way of being. And I hope and pray that you find a way not just to survive, but to flourish through this pandemic. And I hope that you find a way to the way each day. The Lord be with you. And also with you.